are finally coming home. Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore are scheduled to return to Earth after spending nine months in space. The two astronauts became stranded at the International Space Station last year due to a series of mechanical problems. Now NASA wants to bring the unlucky pair home and has sent a fresh crew to the space station. And here they come. Crew 10 taking their first steps outside as they prepare for their journey to the International Space Station. This new crew of astronauts should allow Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore to return home. On Friday, NASA and SpaceX launched the four astronauts from Russia, Japan and America from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. They're called Crew 10 because it's the 10th such mission by SpaceX ferrying crew to and from the space station. The crew is due to arrive at the space station this weekend. After a handover that should last a couple of days, NASA says Williams and Wilmore could begin their journey back to Earth, weather permitting, as soon as Wednesday. Just about 20 seconds away from those events. And then in terms of celebrations, I don't think we've thought that far ahead. Obviously, we're excited to get Crew 9 back, and uh, I know Butch and Sonny are excited to come back. And then uh, and we'll, we'll celebrate, you know, when they're ready. It'll take a little time to get them back reconditioned, and then we'll, we'll do the, a proper celebration. This photo of Butch and Sonny with their families was taken last June, the day they took off, for what was to be an eight-day journey to the space station. But technical concerns, including with the spacecraft's thrusters, led to their extended stay in orbit. Obviously, when you have uh, an issues like we've had, there's some changes that need to be made. Since then, the pair have given several interviews from space, including on Christmas Day. Earlier this month, Williams said the delay has been harder on their families than on them. You know, we're here, we have a mission, we're just doing what we do every day, and, you know, every day is interesting because we're up in space and it's a lot of fun. So um, I think the hardest part is, you know, having the folks on the ground have to not know exactly when we're coming back. When asked what she would miss most about space, Williams replied, everything. This was the third trip to the space station for both Williams, who's 59, and Wilmore, who's 62. Both say they realize it may be their last. It's great to have Keith Cowing with us, editor of NASAWatch.com, who's joining us from Washington, D.C. Keith, good to see you. Finally, after nine months, two veteran astronauts are uh, coming home. Can we just do a quick recap? Why did it take so long for NASA to send a crew to relieve them? Okay, uh, let me give you something from personal experience. I've been on expeditions multiple times to the, the North Pole, Everest Base Camp. Getting there is hard. Living there is hard. The logistics can be complicated. And if something messes up that logistics, it can throw everything off. So you have planners who are thinking ahead two, three, four, five months and what the best way is to fix things. And in this case, Sonny and Butch went up in a Boeing spacecraft. They had problems. NASA decided it wasn't safe for them to come home in it. So they said, we'll tell you what, we're going to move things around, but we need to keep you up there longer. And I don't know Butch, but I know Sunny, and her answer you just had, it was perfect. Uh, I'm sure that if she found out that she's got to spend more time in outer space, it was, oh, gee, more time in outer space. <laughs> so, again, it's not bad news. They weren't stranded. All these stories, about, no, it didn't happen. They, they went up there knowing they could come home in eight days or 80 days. And that's what happened. And everything seems to be going smoothly. Uh, nobody's stranded. They've always had a spacecraft. If they had to come home for any reason, they could have been home in a matter of hours. But logistically speaking, this made the most sense and they were 100% with it. Yeah, Sonny and Butch look happy and Sonny's hair just gets wilder as every day goes past. Keith, um, just on the, the, the matter of Boeing, um, they've had their problems. Is the space industry healthier if Boeing sort out these problems and SpaceX is not left as the only or one of the few crew rated launch providers? Well, let me flip your question completely around. The whole idea initially was we were stuck with the shuttle, then that 
had a problem. And so what they did is said, well, you know, we got to rely on the Russians. Well, we didn't like that. And as you, if you read the newspapers, we don't get along with Russia that well right now. So the idea was to go to the commercial sector, come up with different ways to do it. And they thought, let's have two or three ways to do it in case one doesn't work, the other will. Well, one of them didn't work, the other does splendidly. So the question is, can Boeing come up with enough money to fix this or not? And that's an open question right now. Meanwhile, SpaceX, is, it's a consumer product. You get in, you go up, you come home. And it's working. Uh, Keith, as a low-key space nerd, it's great to have a real one in my presence. I want to ask you about SpaceX. They've had a couple of high-profile, spectacular ends to Starship launches in a time when Elon bashing is popular. Can you tell us how dominant is SpaceX at the moment in terms of quantity to orbit and just the wow factor of what they're doing engineering-wise? Well, yeah, again, you know, I, I've been following, I've known Elon and these people since they started when they were kids, literally kids in their 20s. And so they adopted an ethos of let's test a little, fly a little, test a little, fly a little. They knew they were going to blow things up. They were taking risks early on for the Falcon 9, this rocket that launched the, the crew the, you know, yesterday. They had a blooper reel showing all the explosions. <laughs> they knew this was coming and they had planned for it. NASA doesn't plan to get explosions. They don't. And when they do... It's a big deal. But with SpaceX, they say, well, we've got five more rockets in the barn. We'll just use one of them. And as a result, they've come up with a way to do things faster and cheaper. They can upgrade this thing. And with the Starship, it's a bigger version of what they're flying now. There's no people on board. They make them very fast and they get through. To me, the more important thing was they landed a skyscraper-sized rocket three times now yeah. in the launch pad that it took off. Everybody I talk to, uh, my fellow space nerd, says that's the more difficult part, and they're, they've got that down. So I'm, I'm willing to give them a chance to blow up more of their own rockets until okay. one of us, you and I, can get on board and go into space. Keith, we've got to wrap it. Great to talk to you. Take care.